Hi everyone, this is Reverend Dr. Katie. It is January 23rd in 2018 and I am really happy to be joining you live again because it's been just a little while. I have been really busy with the new year. I had the flu. Lots of you were praying for me, which I really really appreciate as I had my final day as an associate pastor just two days ago on Sunday and it was a really lovely sending off and the church was really warm and and kind and loving and and I love them too so it was it was really a good Sunday um, and now I'm kind of cleaning out my office and saying goodbye to that and so with all of that I've barely been here live uh, for this year but I'm here now so let's go ahead and get started we had some great, great questions and conversation about tithing and finances and offering and abundance. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of little funny stories about me. So I began working in my very first church when I was 22 and right, right out of college while I was attending seminary. I was a children's coordinator. And I kid you not, I've grown up in churches, I've been on committees uh, as, an, as a youth, as a young adult. I did not realize until I worked in a church that the church budget is set from what people pledge that they will be able to give in other church accounts and endowments. It like had not occurred to me that when I wrote on a little card and said, yes, I will give a dollar a week, that someone took that into account and put it into the church budget. And it wasn't then until I realized that like, it mattered if I kept that or didn't keep it, or if I couldn't keep it, I needed to let someone know so that they could make adjustments. So um, I'm, I'm letting you know that you're, if you attend a church, your church budget is set part partly by what people say that they will give if you go to kind of a traditional conventional church. And so think about that really prayerfully and really carefully when it is the, the time of the year when you say what you're going to give for the next calendar year or the fiscal year, wherever your particular church does it. There's no one right way. There's no wrong, one wrong way. There's lots of different ways that churches do that. And so when we make that pledge and that promise, that's in kind of energetic promise that we are making to the institution that loves us and support us, supports us. And that's one way that we give back. And so now as I've been ordained and as a pastor, I see the, um, the ebb and the flow of how people think about finances. So I've got to tell you, in our culture, money is really um, an energetically difficult topic for people to talk about. Sometimes when investment, when price, when cost come up, I just see people shut down all the way, partly because we do not cultivate as Christians a very good and healthy relationship with money. Um, many of us see money as something that's scarce all the time. And we have a like love hate relationship with money. Um, many of us don't really learn how to, um, how to budget and how to, utilize money for our own well-being. I'm not the greatest at that. It's not my parents' fault. They're actually really, really good at that. It's actually not one of my, my better talents. It's something that I've had to learn over the years. And so I want to answer, first of all, a question, just the basics of tithing. So tithing refers to when we give our money, our time, or our talents to our church or our faith community or you know whatever whatever the or religious organization is that you belong to. So let me give you an example. My church, the, the one that I just said goodbye to, um, on my final weekend there, we had a youth lock-in. Yes, we had a youth lock-in <laughs> the night before my final Sunday, but it was actually really, really fun. And people gave very generously by donating food and snacks and by donating their time. They donated their time to come and spend with the youth and play games. That's all an example of giving, of exchange, they feel like they are, they're kind of paying it forward for the generation that's coming forward. They're kind of paying it back for time that was given to them when they were a youth, for instance, or if they didn't have a good experience as a youth in a church, then they're paying it forward. And um, my belief is that they will receive blessings because they have done that. Now, I did not ask anyone to spend their last dollar on like cookies for the youth, you know, um, and so we balance this out appropriately to people's gifts and to their, to their own abundance. So I know that a lot of people struggle with tithing because your finances, your personal money situation is really difficult. And I get it. And I've been there, right? I wasn't always a pastor. I've been there. Uh, and it's not like pastors are usually paid super abundantly either uh, in finances, right? We're paid in other ways. But really what this question requires is for us to examine our own relationship with money and our own relationship with finances. So let me put this out there and see how this resonates with you. 
If we give and we're really fearful or we're giving as a hope to be rewarded, then that's the same energy that's going to come back to us. So if we give with fear and sort of hope of reward, then think about that energy that's going to come back to you. You're going to get the energy of fear and hoping to be rewarded. Now notice I said hoping to be rewarded, not actually being rewarded uh, for that. Of course, I know we don't give because of reward, but I think you understand the language that I'm using here, right? That we are blessed because we give. But if we give out of gratitude because God has provided to us, then that same energy will be cultivated in our own lives. And that's the kind of blessings that we'll be able to receive back. So do you see the major difference there? We could give the same amount of $5. And if we give that out of fear and out of um, kind of terror about our money situation, then we're going to cultivate more fear, more terror. But if we give out of gratitude and out of confidence that our own situation will um, will be blessed, then most likely that is the energy that is going to come back to us. And so I would really challenge you and encourage you to cultivate that really healthy and generous and abundant relationship with money, no matter what the amount is. If the amount's a dollar, if the amount's a hundred dollars, if the amount's a thousand dollars, that kind of energy will really cultivate itself in your own life about everything that you do, finances and money included. So the question about how to tithe is really a question about your own relationship with your own abundance and your own money. So let me give you another example from my own life. In 2010, I applied to go on an experience with other Christian women to Turkey. And as soon as I heard that Turkey was the destination for this particular group, and it's a group that um, goes every single year to another, to a different destination, to learn about women and women in developing country and about their experiences. As soon as I heard that Turkey was the destination, I knew that that was the one for me. The cost was $5,000 and I didn't have it. I didn't have $500 at the time, but I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that, that I was supposed to go to Turkey, that I was supposed to be there. So really, I just set, really set out the abundance to make this happen. So I really began this experience knowing that I was going to go, right? I knew, I knew deep down inside that that trip was for me. So I fundraised, I wrote letters, I applied for scholarships, and every single person that donated to me received something back from me in the form of small gifts that I, that I bought while I was in Turkey, in forms of thank you notes. Uh, sometimes I would play my harp for someone's church, or I would uh, give a presentation at their church on my experience. And in turn, at the presentation, I would then fundraise for the mission project that we selected while we were in Turkey to help immigrants who were actually in Turkey and help refugees who were in Turkey. And so you, you see how that abundance loop went all the way around from my starting with my own mindset and then confidence that this could happen, that abundance could come to me in this form. And then fundraising to be able to go, you know, here we are here in the loop. And then over here, when I return, I give energetically back to those who had donated to me and then kind of closing that loop, we were able to give back to the organizations in Turkey to people who had nothing, to people who have absolutely nothing, who were begging on the street, couldn't have legal jobs while they were in Turkey as refugees. And so that kind of abundance, that created a circle of abundance in my own life, which I was able to um, apply to many, many different areas, including my own personal finances. That was kind of a watershed moment, actually, for me and my own relationship with money right there. And while I was in Turkey, I'm not kidding, I didn't buy anything, <laughs> nothing while I was there except little gifts for people who had, who had given me the means to be able to go. So let me give you a little bit of a warning. If you do have a pastor who guilts you or shames you for not giving, that's a problem. Um, reach out to me so we can talk about how to counteract that because that is not Christ-like. Um, we do not shame or guilt people into giving. We want to empower people in their own lives to experience abundance and then be able to give out of their own gratitude. And then if televangelists, there's some televangelists out there right now who are like asking you to give them a month of your salary and you've never met them. And I say no to that. Um, that to me, that's really, really toxic. 
but that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is creating your own healthy awareness and uh, inner, inner energy around finances as one resource that God gives to us so that we can give back. And so it's amazing to be able to give back um, to God's work through, through institutions, through nonprofits, through lots of different ways so that we can um, all, all be in this together and create abundance for the kingdom of God all together. And so that's kind of my thoughts on tithing. I would welcome your questions, your comments, so that we can talk about that more. Reach out to me anytime. That's what I'm here for. So I definitely want to help you create abundance in your own life. And abundance comes in many, many forms. And let's work on that together. So if you feel yourself hearing the word money and finances and you kind of tense all up, you're not sure what to do with that, you don't know how to um, get that energy rolling in your own life, then let's talk about that because it definitely is possible. So that is it for today. I will see you all pretty soon. It's been really good to talk to you. You can reach out, you can private message me anytime so I can be of greatest service to you. And that's what I'm here for. So talk to you soon. Bye-bye.